All right, so what I got wrong. First thing, Preston Rashawn against the Packers offensive tackles. I thought they'd get more out of, you know, I thought Taylor Moten was going to have a good day and he's, you know, he's, a, he's a good player. This is one of those days where Bryce did a lot of things on schedule and when, and when he felt jittered, the jitters, like when, what we talked about, he got out of there. The rush lanes were poor again. I showed one, but there was plenty of them this week where it's you still have to be able – you can't let guys exit with their shoulder pads facing the line of scrimmage. So we just still – I continue to do a better job there. And it's not always, you know, Preston or Rashad. I should, I should say outside linebacker, linebackers or defensive ends because he did feel pressure early. He did throw a lot of stuff on schedule, but he did feel pressure early. When he was off schedule, he was able to exit the pocket in a way that was advantageous for his throwing position. Packers right guard versus Derek Brown. Um, look, putting Zach Tom on it was like the biggest early decision in the game. I thought it was huge. Uh, you saw what Brown could do against the guard. Now, Brown had what I would just call an effective day, but, you know, wasn't getting back in the back in the backfield from a quarterback standpoint. Uh, let's see, Derek Brown ended up having nine tackles. Okay, so he's a huge effect on the game. So Frankie LeVu, 10 tackles. Derek Brown, nine tackles, okay? But there are no sacks, no tackles for loss. So you have to take that as a, as a W, I think. Um, but you just see what, the, what kind of the problem is with him. He, his ability to disengage from that right guard or, or even exact time at times, especially in the second half. You know, I think Derek got the best of him a couple of plays. But really, really good player. And then Joe Barry versus Thomas Brown. We talked about Panther, Panthers offensive coordinator and the way they're going to use the RPO game moving towards a downhill style of running, moving able to move the pocket. Like, you know, I think, unfortunately, Thomas Brown wins that matchup. You know, 30 points is 30 points, no turnovers. Um, just really high-level play, really, for the first time all season. And you talked about our keys to victory. Stopping the run, we did that. Um, we put the ball in Bryce Young's hand. Bryce Young just outplayed this, quite frankly. Bryce Young in that, in that Carolina passing game outplayed our defense. Um Explosive plays. We had tons of explosive plays really starting from the, the first play of the game with Aaron Jones. And you just he continues to be the, the lightning rod for this this offense. When he's in the game, he just feels like everything's going to be OK. Uh, and then take the gimmies. I think for the most part, you know, the big team with Jordan, with Jordan Love again, when you see he has a higher completion percentage, but he has a lower yards and there's no turnovers. I think right now that's the formula for winning. The, when you look at the last couple of games of the season as they go to seven, eight and they have the opportunity here to still getting to the playoffs. What, you know, what are the requirements for victory? I think it's probably going to be some semblance of these, these three things, uh, stopping the run, you know, having those explosive plays and then taking the gimmies. And those gimmies are the five yard outs. The gimmies are the, the kind of the, 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 the balls that should be completed with in a position that the, the, the receiver can continue his momentum upfield. You know, if you can do that, I think that's, uh, that's the recipe for success. You know, the big takeaway here, I think is, Based on based on the quality of opponent and the output that they had, is time running out on. I think for, from a loyalty standpoint, maybe uh, with uh, Matt Lafleur and Joe Barry, Matt Lafleur being uh, the guy who makes the decisions. You know, I think time might be running out a little bit as far as based on some comments that were made after the game about the, you know, the playing calling was what it was. We got to call what's, you know, we got to play what's called, you know, the game plan was okay, blah, 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 all, all that kind of stuff. It just, it feels like there's not a real belief in what's, in what's happening. And I think that's, um, I think that's a real problem. I just think that's a real problem. Okay, a couple questions. There's a lot of rants on here and not as many, <laughs> not as many questions, but let's see if I can get some. Um, I, so the question I'm talking about is Jair a problem or some of a deeper issue with the defense, the entire coaching staff. Yeah, I, I think, I don't, I think Jair is, is, is a lightning rod because he's so talented and he's not free to be outspoken. But I think the reality is if you're, if you're looking at the situation, the, the, I said yesterday, you have an authority problem. And the authority problem is not Jair Alexander. Jair Alexander is not the authority problem. The authority problem is to this is coaching staff feel like they still have authority over this group. In other words, are, are they being heard? Are they being respected? Do they do the, do the players believe, especially on the defensive side and what they're doing offensively, like the progression between the offense now and the defense, given, given the, the skill set, given the, the age and experience, like the progression offense is so much steeper than the defense. You know, you could say that the, his defense regressed. I don't, you know, who, who's to say for sure, but the numbers tell, tell a story that, that we don't really want to read. Um, Mike, is the issue Barry's defensive calls of the play in the secondary and inside linebackers? Everyone wants Barry fired. I don't see that changing much. Um, we showed it. You, you still got to make tackles. 
you get slow make tackles, you got to you got to knock down contested balls, and if you don't do that, nothing's going to look good. Uh, I don't think you know, there's a couple plays. I say this every year. There's a couple plays, a game that you're going to lose because of scheme, regardless of who you are. You're going to lose a couple plays in scheme, and some and those plays your 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 special players have to overcome your scheme and, and make something happen. You're going to lose a lot more plays because you 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 give up yards after contact. Yards after contact is a much better indicator of success for me than what scheme you're running. But yards after contact is a coaching thing as well. So what it's how you know the standard is the standard plaque on the wall. Like what matters to you? What is what are you responsible for? Bill Belichick always says, what kind of defensive players I like? Oh, I like the ones that make tackles. Right. So it's just not it's not rocket science. You know, uh, why was the running game better today? Was it Aaron Jones? Was it improved blocking? I, you see it. You, when Aaron's in there, things open up. And I think, you know, I can just tell you this. Up front, when you've got a guy that is a is a player that just makes explosive plays over and over, you do get excited up front. It's not like you sit there and you block differently, but there's always this like, like when a mom was in the game, or actually Najee, any of those guys, when you have those kind of players versus a, three yards in a cloud of dust kind of guy the excitement level do you strain more not consciously but maybe subconsciously there is something to that like we know he's in the game all we have to do is hold this block a little bit more and he can do something special all we got to do is put him on the safety he can do something special all we can do is you know watch this down on the kick play make sure that corner because we know that corner is not going to want to tackle Aaron he's going to lower his he's going to lower the shoulder pads maybe he gets through and gets another 30 yards like he did in the game here so like you do know that stuff you know I don't think consciously anybody blocks better but I do think Aaron Jones is, does make that difference. All these questions are about, um, oh, here's one on Tucker Craft. Let's talk about Tucker. So Tucker, the future of the tight end room. Look, I, again, I think if I'm Luke Musgrave, I wish I was playing right now because you see what Tucker Craft's doing in this offense and, and how Matt LaFleur is going to use the tight end position. It's going to be used even more, I think, when they get Luke back and you have both those guys next season. But Tucker certainly, you know, what what it seems like to me is, is Tucker Craft is – I don't, you know, I, he's certainly gotten better, right? But when you look at it, it's like, I think he could probably do all the stuff he's doing right now on day one. It's just a, a question of being comfortable with the offense, like trusting that you can make those calls and he's going to make the right decisions. Um, you, there's plays where he blocks well. There's plays where he, I mean, a lot of that stuff's like just you can you develop. But I think a lot of this is going, is Matt LaFleur going, okay, this is how we can use this player. Like when they do the, you know, when they do the insert, the, the inverted insert, and then he's open in the flat, that's something he did. It's just the way that Matt schemes the plays. And that's whatever it seems like what, because Carolina did the same thing. It seems like what everybody's doing, but getting that ball out in the flat and be able to turn your shoulders, and get downhill, being an athlete, you know, that's something that that's one of the reasons they drafted him. So you got to be excited about the opportunities that are continued to build for that tight end room. For me, having two tight ends that can play, you know, three downs, is one of the most powerful things you can have in an offense now. Because again, you just talked about the linebacker size, like the, the the hybrid linebacker body and the ability to run the football with six, seven man boxes. Um, it changes the way that play the teams are going to play defense. Are you going to play base? Are you going to play nickel against those guys? And the way you can attack any defense in the national football league, given the fact that you have that kind of player, it really is a game changer. Obviously not as much as a Tyree kill, but there's one Tyree kill. There's a lot of these tight ends that are starting to get more and more popular. So the, the more that those guys can do as far as in the running game and in, in the pass pro, the more valuable they are to the offense, the more they'll be featured. So I think that's it for the day. Guys, we'll get the show back on 30. You can send, uh, send all the questions you have for me to Michael 68 process to perform on Instagram. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with a preview, international preview on uh, Thursday or Friday. Till then, have a great week, everyone.